today uh, I am going to talk about uh, transfer learning techniques. So before I start with this transfer learning techniques, uh, let me give you an example of what transfer learning is exactly. Suppose you want to uh, build a very uh, posh house, okay? You want to build a very posh house with uh, so many rooms, uh, it should be very perfect. Um, can anyone tell me how many uh, months or a year it will take to build a very posh house? Maybe a 5 BHA house. Maximum, how much time it will take? Maybe around uh, a year. Yes, if you want to complete perfectly, maybe it will take around a year to complete the house. But if you want to uh, buy a built-in house, okay, with all the uh, uh, things you require, so you require uh, many things in the building, okay, with all your ideas, if you uh, get a house which is already built, okay, you can save your time, you can save your effort, you can save everything, and you can directly go and start living in that building, right? If you get a house like that. The same thing happens in the transfer learning also. So if you want to train a model in machine learning, if you want to train a model, actually it will take long time to train because you need a very large data because you're going to make your machine think as human, right? So you have to give a lot of uh, cases to your machine to understand what the data is. Suppose you want your machine to uh, classify the animals, uh, which is dog, cat, um, a cat, a tiger, a lion, then you have to give images of all these animals in different portions, okay, different um, angles. You have to uh, give an image, you have to train your machine with a lot of images, okay? Maybe the training will take um, uh, many days to train your machine because your data set is very large, okay? So suppose somebody has already trained the model, okay, and the model is ready to be used, okay, and you have a task you have a task for your task you have a very small data you want to uh, create a model you cannot create a model with a very small data but you can use a model which is already uh, trained on a very large data okay so what you're doing is just it's like copying your assignment so what we will do when we are students we will try to copy somebody's assignment right same thing you're going to do in transfer learning also somebody has already built a machine learning model on a very large data set Okay, and the machine learning model is very deep model. Okay, so they have built a deep neural network. It means it is having a lot of layers. So maybe they spend uh, months together to create a model. Now what we are try trying to do, we are going to copy that model and we are going to use that model for our data set. That is what is called as transfer learning. Okay, so now let's just enter into the uh, main concept of transfer learning. So transfer learning is making use of knowledge that you learned in one task, okay, you're going to use that knowledge and you're going to use it in your new task. That is what is called as transfer learning. So when you go for a transfer learning, as I already told you, you have a very small data set and you want to build a very uh, good model. How can you build a good model with a small data set? You cannot do that. But can you use a model which is built on a very large data set? For your problem, yes, you can use. When you can use, if your problem and the already existing problem is same, so that is also image classification. This is also image classification or that is also object detection. Yours is also object detection. Why not you use a model which is already built? Yes, you can reuse the model which is already built. Okay, what is required is you have to just fine tune the model. Okay, so you buy a house, ready-made house and you do some tuning inside the house. Okay, you change the settings of the house. The same thing we are going to do in transfer learning also. We are going to get the model which is already developed with the very large data set and we are going to use that model for our data set. Maybe our data set is very small. We are going to use it for our data set. What is required? Only little fine tuning is required. You need not build your model from the scratch. You need not uh, sit and train for hours together. No need. Okay, so those models, so we are going to talk about those models. Now, what is those models? Those models are actually um, uh, state of art models, models because they are built in a good environment. They are built in good GPUs and those models are built on a very large data set. Okay, so I think uh, you would have heard about uh, this uh, challenge. Actually, it's called as ImageNet challenge. Every year, this challenge will uh, take place. It's like a competition. The competition will take place and they will give you a data set and everyone will start developing model uh, for that data set and the top five models will be selected. 
okay so these are the models we are going to use for our new data set okay the top five models we are going to use those models for our data set okay so that is what is called as transfer learning so here you can see already you have a model okay so that model is built on a large data set okay we are going to use the knowledge that is gained okay in this model and we're going to use that knowledge for our target model okay so this is called as transfer learning now what does this knowledge mean the knowledge uh, in machine learning or in deep learning mainly it is the weights okay so i think all uh, you all already know the neural networks right you know uh, about the neural networks the neural network means what it's how it learns the pattern with the help of weights right so weights so we are going to use the weights of your source model we are going to use the same weights to train our target model okay so that is what is called as a knowledge here okay now uh, if you take your traditional learning in traditional learning you will be creating model for each source data see you can see this source data these uh, source data are different for each different source data you will be creating a separate model for each one so here you can see you have three models for three different types of task but what you do in transfer learning in transfer learning you can use uh, suppose for example uh, yeah in transfer learning now here you have a, a knowledge or a model okay so here you have developed a model for these two tasks now the same model you can use for a different task that is what is called as transfer learning okay the same model you are going to use for a different task this is called as transfer learning so what you will do is uh, all these transfer learning techniques are basic cnn architecture okay so it's a basic cnn architecture now what we are going to do is this is the uh, model okay this is a model which is already existing now what we are going to do for this model is we will be taking the first few layers we will copy as it is because in cnn architecture the first few layers will be learning the basic features of a data so when you get an when you give an image the first few layers will learn only the basic features of data like it will learn uh, it will apply some basic filters like uh, how to calculate the edge uh, what is the edge of the image what is the color of the image what is the sharpness of the image so only the basic features will be learned by the first few layers okay the deep layers will learn only the advanced concepts so when we are uh, when you want to use a model which is already existing for our new task what you will do is you will keep the first few layers as it is only the last layers the last layers only will learn some specific features so we will be only training the last few layers okay so that is what is called as transfer learning so uh, I, will, um, i will give you another example suppose we have a model that model is uh, classifying a dog and a cat okay now i want to classify a medical image okay i have an x ray i want to classify whether that x ray is having a, um, a cancer or i have a mri i want to classify that whether it is having a cancer or it's not having a cancer both the tasks are completely different that is classifying dog and cat this is classifying a medical image can i use a model which is classifying dog and cat to classify the medical image yes you can use okay so what you have to do is you can use the same model but first few layers you can have as it is here you can see the first few layers are frozen so you can have the first uh, few layers as it is and the other okay the deep layers alone you can add new okay the first because the first few layers in your cnn is going to learn only the basic features of an image okay like uh, as i told you the edge the sharpness and all those things so basic features only it is going to learn so it will be same for what type of the task uh, irrespective of the task so you can keep your first few layers as it is and then train only the uh, advanced layers so in advanced layers when you start training it will learn the new ways now here you are not going to touch so it is you can save your time instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, training your network from the scratch you can save your time because first new layers are already learned the basic feature okay so here you can see uh, our model is actually built for uh, classifying the birds okay this is a model now what we i am going to do i am going to use the same model okay and the first few layers i am going to froze i am going to keep it as it is because they are general learners okay the higher layers okay i am going to 
add new higher layers and I'm going to train only the higher layers on the new data. Okay, I'm going to train the higher layers on the new data. So I can reduce my time. Okay, I can reduce my time because I'm just copying the same layers of the previous model. This is the idea of transfer learning. Hope I'm clear. Okay, so now uh, where all you can use uh, transfer learning? Transfer learning actually you can use only to learn the features. It means I can use half of the model. Okay, uh, the half of the model. The first half will learn the feature of the data. The second half will do the classification. So either I can take a model split into two. Okay, I can use it only for learning the features or I can take the full model and use it for classification. Okay, so it depends on uh, how we want to use. Okay, um, so here by using this transfer learning techniques, you can save your time. Uh, you need not uh, you need not train your model from the scratch. You can save your times and training the initial model. It takes a long time because you will have more number of layers um, to learn the features of the data. So those time can be reduced. Only you have to train your um, a fully connected layer that is a higher layers only you have to train your higher layers and it will back propagate and it will learn the new weights the other layers will be frozen okay no need to train those layers because those are basic features so this is the um, idea of transfer learning now where all you can use this transfer learning you can use a transfer learning in image classification you can use an uh, object detection all the image uh, concepts you can use segmentation object detection you can use it in uh, sentiment analysis, uh, text to translation, speech recognition. So everywhere you have a lot of models. The models are available ready-made. Just download this model and you can use it for your type, your data set. Okay, so these are the applications of transfer learning. Now, if you see uh, the types of model, uh, now you can see here, uh, just take the uh, CNN type of model. You have these many, not I have just listed only few. There are many actually. I will show you the list of uh, these models. If you take your uh, CNN based model, you have RSNS 50, MobileNet, uh, NASNet A, VGG 16, VGG 19, Inception V3, EfficientNet uh, B7, Exception. So th there are different versions. All the versions are not given in this diagram. So you have so many models. All these models are available ready-made. What is important is you have to find out which model will be best suitable for your task. Okay, similarly for natural language processing also, you have many models, okay, if you want to uh, do um, a sentiment analysis, you have different algorithms like uh, breadth, transformer, EL, uh, ELMO, word to vec okay, so you have to convert your word to vector globe, for everything already the models are uh, available, pre-trained models are available, just you have to download the model and use it for your data set. So I've just uh, given you uh, two uh, applications. Okay, so basically, uh, how uh, what are the steps required to do a transfer learning? Okay, the first step that is required is you have to obtain your pre-trained model. Now, Keras gives you all the pre-trained models. So just you have to obtain the pre-trained model. From that pre-trained model, you have to create a base model. Because I told you, you will be using first few layers and the last few layers, you will delete the last few layers and you will add your own layers. So you have to create a base model. In the base model, you have to select which layers you're going to freeze and which are the new layers you're going to add. So the freezed layer, you will not train. You will train only the new layer on the data set that you have. And you can fine tune your model uh, as usual by changing the learning rate, by changing the uh, type of uh, um, uh, gradient descent uh, uh, factor or optimization. Okay, you can change, do fine tuning to your model. Okay, so it's easily you can develop a machine learning model by using the uh, transfer learning techniques. Okay, so uh, here if you see you're taking a big transfer learning uh, technique, so you can see there are a lot of layers here. You are planning to use all these layers as it is. So here you can see till this you're planning to use the layers as it is and you're going to delete only the last few layers. Okay, you're going to delete the last few layers and you're going to add new layers. Okay, new layers. So how many layers I want to delete or how many layers I want to freeze, it depends upon the type of um, problem that you want to solve. Okay, so it is a trial and error method. So you have to try for different uh, uh, possible uh, combinations. 
uh, and then the last layer you will be adding is the uh, the last layer that you will add is the output layer okay so output layer depend upon how many classes you have okay suppose you have 1000 classes then your output layer will have 1000 neurons so depending on the output number of outputs uh, you will a number of classes you have to create your output layer so this is how we will be creating our base layer so and uh, as i told you already you have to identify which layers you're going to freeze so as i told you this is again a trial and error method so i told you basically the first few layers uh, will be learning the general characteristics of the data right so first few layers we will take and we will freeze those layers so it will not learn anything okay you will not train the first few layers you will start training only from the last layer so you can save your time okay and you have to add new layers at the top of your model so when you want to add new layers that new layers will be learning the exact features or will be learning specific feature for your data set because your original data set your model uh, classified was bird and cat but you're going to use it for medical image okay so the specific uh, features will be learned by the top uh, top layers so you should be very careful when you add the top layers okay so you have to concentrate on these top layers because it's going to add a because it's going to learn the uh, specific features okay and then you have to start training your new layers on your new data set so it will so it will take some time because it's a new layer and uh, it is going to learn your new data set okay so uh, you have to start uh, training your new layers so it will learn the weights sometimes it will be uh, you will get error so it will back propagate and it will start adjusting the weights again it will back propagate okay so slowly it will start learning so only the top layers that you added new you're going to train from the uh, scratch other layers will remain as it is okay and finally you have to fine tune your model so fine tune your model means uh, uh, because slowly you are learning that only the last layers you're going to train right so you have to set a very low learning rate so that the layers learn slowly okay uh, it will not go to overfitting or underfitting so it will learn slowly the entire features of your new data set so that is what is fine tuning so you can change the um, optimization method you can add some uh, pooling layers you can add some uh, padding all those things you can add to your final layers to improve uh, the model performance okay now let's come to the uh, transfer learning model now as i told you every year you will have some competition right you will have a competition in that competition they will give you some data sets now you have to create a model on those data sets so what are the uh, popular data sets uh, these the uh, popular data sets on which the transfer learning models are developed imagenet okay ci uh, far 19 and uh, minist uh, data set okay so if you say uh, take imagenet if you take ImageNet, you have 14 million images um, uh, and you have so many categories, maybe around 30,000 categories are available uh, in these images. Okay, So the models are developed on such a large data set, okay? it's a famous data set, which is called as ImageNet. And the CIFR data set also, here you have 10 classes and you have 60,000 uh, images are available. So here you can see mostly the images uh, are the mix. You have car, you have birds, you have... Uh, trucks, you have boards, it's a mix of uh, images. So you have uh, how many classes? You have 10 classes in this uh, data set. And this is uh, Minutes database. Uh, here you have handwritten images in a gray scale. Uh, you have around 60,000 images um, for digits 0 to 9. Okay, so this is uh, another database. Now the models are developed based on this data set. Okay, fine. Now what are the models? As I told you, uh, Keras, just a minute, yeah, I will just show you this website. So if you go to your Keras, you can see all the available models. See, you can see a big list of models. Yes, you can see a very big list of models. These are all uh, pre-built models. So any model you can just download and use it for your data set. And you can see the top uh, five accuracy models, top five accuracy, what are the accuracies of these models is also given here. Okay, so mostly these models are built on the data set which I have specified, ImageNet uh, data set. Okay, now come back. Now what I'm going to talk uh, in today's session, I'm going to talk about a few 
uh, pre-existing models, like I'm going to talk about AlexNet architecture. Why I'm going to talk about AlexNet? It is the first architecture which was created under transfer learning topic. So I will be talking about AlexNet. Then we will see the most famous one, VGG. We have uh, many versions in VGG. And then we will talk about uh, Google Net, which is also called as Inception. Then finally, we will be talking about residual network. Okay. So now let's coming uh, coming to the AlexNet. So here in this AlexNet, if you see your input image should be of size 227 into 227. Okay. And it is a RGB channel. So you have three channels here, uh, red, green, and blue. Okay. So this is your input to AlexNet. Now, if you see your AlexNet, as I told you, this is a first model. It was developed in the year 2012. Okay. So it's a winning of ImageNet uh, competition. Uh, 2012. Now here you have eight convolution layers. I think this is a model which is having the least number of layers. Okay, so here you see a convolution layer. Okay, you know what is convolution layer? Convolution layer, in convolution layer you will have a filter. Yes, you will have a filter and the filter will, uh, suppose this is your image. Okay, you will have a filter. The filter will stride across the image. Okay, so it will stride across the image to learn the features of the image. Okay, so in convolution layer, you have to specify what will be the size of this filter. Okay, so here you can see the size of the filter is 11 cross uh, 11 and the stride is 4. It means how much position it has to move. So it will move uh, uh, first 4 position, then it will jump to the next 4 position. So the striding is 4 here. So this is your first convolution layer. Then you can see a next max pooling layer is added. Uh, and this is the um, filter size of max pooling layer. And this is the stride of max pooling layer. Then you can see the next another convolution layer is added. Okay. Uh, and the filter size is 5 cross 5. And the stride is same. That is stride will be 4 only. So for all the convolution layers, you can see the filter size changes here. First convolution layer had 11 cross, uh, 11, 11 cross 11 filter. The second convolution layer have 5 cross 5. And the next one will have three cross three and the other all the convolution layers are having same filters three cross three and the stride value will be uh, same here but in the last uh, yeah the slide value will be same and if you take max pooling layer it has a filter of size three cross three uh, filter and the stride value as two now how did they uh, come into this architecture again it's a trial and error method. So you have to train, keep on training and trying different combinations of filters and different combinations of uh, stride values. And then they come out with a uh, new model. Okay, so here you have eight convolution layers. And finally, these are the uh, final layers, okay, fully connected layers. Okay, and this will be your uh, output layer. So they are using softmax activation function. Okay, and how many classes are there? There are thousand classes are there, okay. So uh, this is your EMI, uh, AlexNet architecture and this is the first architecture which was uh, built. Okay, and it was the winning of the competition 2012. The next model, the famous model uh, in most of the recent uh, research papers, if you see, uh, most of them will be using this VGG uh, 16 and VGG 19. So what they will do is they will build a neural network from the scratch and they will compare their algorithm with the pre-existing model or directly you can implement pre-existing model on your new data set and compare different pre-existing models together. So that also you can do. So now if you see here, this is your VGG16 architecture, you're giving your input image. The input image should be of size uh, 224 to 224. And then here you can see uh, you have your convolution layer here. Okay, the first number of filters is 64 filters you need. The second number of filters you need is 128 filters. Now, what is special about VGG16 is the filter size remains the same for all the convolution layers. Okay, the filter size will be 13, uh, sorry, 3 cross 3 filter with stride value as 1, with a stride value as 1. Now, why it is called as VGG16? Because you will have 16 convolution layers in this model. So, this model is a very easy model because it forms a uniformity. All the convolution layers will have same number, uh, uh, sorry, will have the filter size same, three cross three. Stride value also same. Max pooling layer will have a filter of size two cross two. Okay, and the stride value will be, sorry. Yeah, slide value will be uh, two. 
okay and you will have five max cooling layer here and this will be your size of your input and here you can see the number of filters number of filters how many filters you need for uh, each layers okay so this is your vgg16 architecture okay and the next one i want to talk about is your inception v3 model suppose you have uh, uh, suppose you have your task now look at this task here you have to classify dog okay you have to classify dog if you take this image the dog is fully focused right now if you take this image you have some background okay so some uh, importance are given to the background and then you have a dog now let's take this one if you say, uh, take this image most of the uh, part of the image is taken by the background the dog is available in a very small part right but all the three images are dog but the uh, importance or the area of uh, occupancy of this object is different for each image so if you have a data set like this then it is better to use inception v3 model because in inception v3 model you see the convolution layers are uh, added parallelly you can see the convolution layers are added parallelly and each convolution layer have a different filter size you can see a uh, Uh, the filter size is different for each convolution layer because to cover the um, object in uh, different direction so you can see the first one is having one cross one okay so here if you see it occupies a very less space the, uh, the dog occupies a very less space so you need a very smaller filter here sometimes object occupies a full thing so you need a big filter here okay so you have uh, you can see the convolution layers here have Uh, trained with the different filter size so this is a speciality about inception v3 model okay so the final model will look like this you have different versions of inception v3 um different versions are available i i showed you in the website of keras there are different versions available so here if you see you will have 22 convolution layers and the layers are arranged in parallel you can see it's arranged in parallel and each one will have so here you can see it's arranged in parallel and each one will have a different filter size okay so each one will have a different filter size so this is your inception v3 model architecture and the next one uh, i'm going to discuss the last one that i'm going to discuss is the resnet 15 model architecture now when you will use a resnet see sometimes when you train your model when you take your resnet you have different versions like you have resnet 34 resnet 50 resnet 101 resnet 152 these numbers indicates how many convolution layers are available in this architecture okay so many uh, layers are available in this architecture now uh, in resnet 50 model what is the speciality about this model um, see when you are when you are talking about uh, uh, neural network problem that you will face is vanishing gradient problem it is when you are training this layer it will start learning the weights okay so when there is a error it back propagates and try to uh, adjust the weights again if there is a error here it back propagates and try to adjust the weights here so back propagation will happen so again the weights of this one depends on this one this one depends on this one and this one depends on this one so when it starts back propagating sometimes the weight starts reducing okay and it becomes vanishing okay so because when it back propagate and start adjusting sometimes the weight will become goes in negative okay so uh, uh, that problem is actually called as vanishing gradient problem so when you have a vanishing gradient problem how will you solve the vanishing okay that one slide is missing okay so when you have a vanishing gra uh, gradient problem uh, what will happen is um, how you can overcome the vanishing gradient problem is by using the concept of skip architecture okay so what will happen is the output of this neuron will be given to this one and also it will skip this particular part and it will be directly given to the other neuron so this is a concept that is used in resnet 50 model architecture okay so here you can see the output of this one is skipped and it is directly given to the input of another one so wherever you want to skip when you find there will be a vanishing gradient problem you can skip that particular part and give the input directly to the other layers okay so this is the concept that is used in resnes 50 model architecture okay so uh, the skip architecture uh, technique is used in resnes model
okay now uh, here in the slide you can see the top five models okay so these are the top five models you have dgg 16 uh, which was uh, created in the year 2014 and you have this many parameters tunable parameters in this model and this is the accuracy okay uh, and uh, resonance 50 inception v3 uh, efficient uh, b0 efficient uh, b7 so these are the uh, top five models uh, you can use so if you have any problem set you want to create a model from the scratch you can try these models because these are top performing models now as i told you already uh, if you have an idea of doing transfer learning for your technique now you have to decide how you're going to do transfer learning whether you're going to use your transfer learning as a classifier so what is this classifier you're not going to change anything in your model suppose um, you, we are taking vgg16 okay what data set you have you have a cat and dog data set can i uh, use that data set directly on my vgg16 yes you can use it because vgg16 is trained on the image net in image net you have cat and dog okay so uh, same type of data set only your task is also having so no need to change any layers just directly you can use your model and you can classify your uh, task okay so if your source task and the target task are similar in that case no need to do any changes to your model just you can use your model as a classifier okay so that is one part second part suppose the source um, your source uh, task and the uh, target task is completely different okay um, or only some parts are matching or it is different or some parts are matching then you can use your transfer learning model to learn only the features okay so what you can do you can divide you can split your transfer uh, transfer learning model into half so you will use only the first part the first part is actually used to extract the feature the second part you will develop your own layers so you can use transfer learning only to get the features okay or you can uh, get the features use some of the uh, layers and add some new layers uh, to the end of your model and then you can retrain your model that also you can use or what you can do just you can use the weights that are learned in your uh, pre-training models just you can copy the weights of ImageNet or you can copy the weights of uh, any data set you want you can just copy the weights and use the weights in your model that is also possible so the different ways in which you can use your transfer learning model okay uh, now you can see here um, you will uh, in some cases what you will do you will take your uh, transfer learning model and you will start training your transfer learning model from the beginning because your task is completely different okay now here this is same as creating a new model because you're, uh, this is the same as creating a new model. Only thing you did not add the layers. You just copied the layers of BGG16, but you started doing training from the scratch. Anyway, it is going to take more number of time. Just copy the model, okay? But you're training the whole model, okay? So this is just same as creating a new model. Or what you can do, you can freeze the first few layers, okay? Because it's going to learn the... Uh, general features so you will freeze the first few layers and then you will start training only the last layers okay so this is also possible or you can freeze the entire model and you will just train only the output layer that is also possible okay so this and all is trial and error method and it also depends upon what type of task you have if your uh, target task is completely different from your uh, source task then you need to do some training in your last layers Okay, suppose if your target task is very similar to your source task, then there is no need to train your model, just you can use your model for classification. Maybe the number of classes are different. In ImageNet, the number of classes are more. Maybe in your uh, task, you have the number of classes is very less, so you have to add only the output layer. Okay, so uh, you, you can see, you have to check in what quadrant you belong to. Okay, so if you have a large data set, but different from the pre-trained model data set, then you have to train your entire model. Your data set is very large. You have a new model. You have a new task, which is completely different. Then train your entire model. Suppose you have a large data set similar to your pre-trained model data set. Similar. Then you can go for this one. Similar. Just to add some few uh, uh, last layers extra and freeze a few layers. Suppose your data set is very small. Your data set is very small and different from pre-trained model. 
then you can freeze only very few layers. See, you can freeze only very few layers. Many layers you have to train. Okay. Suppose uh, your data set is very small and it's very similar. Your data set is very small. So you cannot train from the scratch. So you can freeze more layers. Okay. So this diagram will show you how much layers you can freeze and how much layers you can uh, train. Okay. So uh, take, uh, so now in this uh, few slides, we will see how to uh, create a new model from the uh, transfer learning model. Now here I have the code. Uh, here you can see how to load the model uh, from Keras. Okay, so here you can see Keras application, just load the model. See, import VGG 16 and load your VGG 16 model. Now my target task is very similar to my VGG 16 uh, model. It's very similar. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm not going to add any layers new to my model. I'm just going to use my model as a classifier. So what I will do, this is the input image that I want to classify. Okay, so I will get the input image. I will convert my input image similar to the uh, pixels that is required by VGG16. In VGG16, what is the input? I think I showed you in the architecture diagram. It requires 224 into 224 into 3. So you have to convert your input image to uh, that pixel. You have to reshape your image, pre-process your image, and then just call predict. So here you see I did not add any new layers because my source task and the target task are similar. So I'm not adding any new layers. I'm just using the pre-existing model VGG16 as it is and then I am predicting what is the label here. So this is one method. Now if you see in this method, in this method if you see I'm importing the v, uh, Inception V3 model. Again, it is available in Keras, okay? So I'm just importing this model. Now, when I import this model, you see, I remove the last 15 layers, see, minus 15. So last 15 layers, I remove the last 15 layers. Okay, the other layers, I make it false because the last 15 layers, I'm going to add new. Okay, so I remove the last 15 layers. Okay, the other layer, sorry, the other layers, the other layers I'm uh, going to freeze. So how I will freeze the other layers, I will make trainable is equal to false. So I'm not going to train the uh, other layers. The last 15 layers I'm going to remove from the model. And what are the new things I'm going to add? New layers I'm going to add. I'm going to add a global average pooling layer. I'm going to add a flatten layer. I'm going to add a dense layer, dropout layer. Again, I'm going to add a dense layer. And you can see this is your final output layer, a dropout layer. And then you can see this is your final output layer with four neurons and the activation function is softmax. Okay, so this is the new layers which are added to the model. Okay, so this is how you have to import the model and add uh, some new layers to your model. Now, which one will be trained? Only these layers will be trained. You can see only this, this one will be trained. So you have to train your model again. Okay, but which one will not be trained? The uh, All the other layers before the 15 layers, all those layers will be uh, frozen. So it will not be trained. It will use the same weight, which uh, it learned when it used ImageNet. Okay, only for these layers will be started training from the uh, scratch for your new data set. Okay, so this is how we have to uh, use transfer learning. Now, when you should not use uh, transfer learning, uh, sometimes when you use transfer learning for the new data set, you will get a very low uh, results. Okay, and your uh, data set is very different. But you can use your data, when your data set is very completely different, yes, you can use, but you have to train more. Okay, your, you have to concentrate more on your uh, top layers and you have to train much. Okay, but, uh, but instead of that, you can start training your new layer, new uh, model itself. Suppose you want to add more new layers and you have to train more um, new layers, then it's better to build the layers from the scratch. Okay, now you see there are a lot of researchers are going on. Uh, they are trying to use all these uh, transfer learning techniques, all these transfer learning models and they're trying, uh, trying to compare. Uh, now in this uh, session also I'm going to show you an example how to classify a brain MRI image uh, using a transfer learning model. Okay, so uh, actually the model is built on an image data set, um, on ImageNet data set. Now I'm going to use the same thing from a medical data set. You can see how much accuracy you will get. 
okay um, so sometimes uh, it will perform very poor in that cases you should not use transfer learning you have to remove as many as layers uh, as possible and you have to start training some new layers uh, transfer learning technique okay so now uh, i will show you a demo of how to uh, classify a brain mri image okay and then we will go to the uh, next session So here I have the code to classify the brain MRI image. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. So uh, here you have uh, Keras. Okay, from Keras you are going to import uh, VGG sixteen. Okay, so this is my model I am going to import. And here you can see uh, what is the size of the image required by VGG sixteen. The size of the image should be two twenty four into two twenty four. Um, and here, if you see the weights, I'm going to download the weights. Okay, so the weights will be uh, same as ImageNet weights. So ImageNet means you already know ImageNet is a data set. Okay, so with that data set, what was a weight learned by VGG sixteen? Those weights are imported. Okay, so weights is equal to ImageNet. And include top layer. See, I'm not going to include the top layer. So I give the top layer is equal to false. And then here, this will be my input shape. So input shape will be two twenty four into two twenty four into three. Okay. Now, if you see, um, uh, so top layers I'm not going to include. Okay. So without including the top layers, so here top layers means the fully connected layers. Okay, so after all the convolution layers and max pooling layer, you will have a fully connected layer, right? So I'm not going to include those fully connected layer. I'm going to add by myself. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the training is equal to false here. So here you can see every layers that is imported from VGG sixteen model. I'm going to make it false. It means I'm going to freeze those layers because I'm not going to train those layers. Okay. Uh, now you can see um, this is just a for loop to print the layers which are uh, imported from the VGG sixteen. So here you can see how many layers are imported. You can see eighteen uh, layers. Okay, so this is your input layer. Along with your input layer, you have eighteen layers. Okay, so you can see convolution layer, max pooling layer, convolution layer, max pooling layer. Yes, you can see here. Now you can see there is a false in all the layers. It means these layers I am going to use as it is from my VGG sixteen. It, it means the weight as weight are going to be copied as it is. I am not going to train these layers. I am going to use as it is. Okay. Now uh, coming to the uh, bottom layer. Now I am going to add a few more layers to my model. So this will be my base model. Okay. So this will be my base model. Okay. Now to this base model, I am going to add few more layers. Okay, so I have created a function to add a few more layers. Now, what are the layers I'm going to add? I'm going to add a global average pooling. Okay, and then I'm going to add some three dense layers. Okay, you can see the activation function is ReLU, and then finally I'm going to add an output layer. Okay, so this is your output layer. See, can you see number of classes here? So uh, your source data, how many classes your source data is having? That many classes you have to give here. Okay, and the activation function is softmax. Okay, so just I added a few layers. So if you want to get better results, then you have to do some trial and error method here. You have to uh, run or train your model for different uh, type of uh, layers. So you can see there is no dropout layer available here. So try adding dropout layers and try adding more dense layers. Okay, so you have to try more. So this is your base model. To the base model, I added these new layers. Okay, fine. Now after adding these new layers, you can see here the number of classes we are going to use only two. That is a brain MRI image. We are going to tell whether it is having a cancer or it's not having a cancer. Okay, so uh, whether it's having a block or not having a block. So there is only two class here. Now here you can see the model summary. So in the model summary, you can see the new layers which we added. See, this these are the layers which are already existing. Now you can see the new layers that we have added also is coming along with this. See, these are the new layers that we have added. So totally, you have this many parameters to be tuned. Okay. Now I'm going to import the data set. The data set is available in uh, 
Kaggle. Okay, so let me show how to uh, get the data set from the Kaggle. Uh, suppose this is a data set. So here you have brain MRI images. Okay, so it is available in the uh, Kaggle. Now, when you go to this page, you can see the data set here. Okay, you can see the data set here. Now, just click here, you will get a copy the API command. Okay, so this is required to just download the data set from the Kaggle directly into your Colab. Okay, so you need to copy this API command to just download the data set. Um, Okay, uh, just to download the data set in your uh, collab, you need uh, this API key, plus you have to go into an account, suppose you have an account uh, in uh, Kaggle, so this is my account, uh, just click on account, here you will get uh, create new API token, just click here, you can see uh, API token is downloaded here, yes, you can see a token downloaded here. I will just rename it to Kaggle.json. Okay, so this is the API token. So I need two things. One, I need the API key of the data set. Other one, I need the uh, token uh, from my account. Two things are required. After that, you can come here. You have to copy the API key here. Now this code I will share with you. See, when I execute this part of the code, see, I have to, uh, you will get uh, choose file, click here, you have to attach the API which you have downloaded. Okay, so now your Kaggle and Google Collab will be connected. After that, I told here you have an API, see brain MRI images for brain tumor reduction. So here you have an API command, just copy this API command and then Kaggle dataset download, okay? So here, this is your API command. Just copy paste, you will get your API command. Now, when you execute, you can see automatically the dataset will be downloaded to the collab. Okay, so you can see a dataset will be downloaded. Now you can see your dataset, see? Your dataset is downloaded here. It will be a zip file. So you have to extract your zip file. So this block is to extract your zip file. So here you can see your zip file is extracted. After the zip file is extracted, now you have to um, uh, read your zip file. Okay, so let me show the extracted zip file. So here you can see the extracted zip file. Okay, so it has two uh, folders, S and no. So whether there is a tumor or whether there is no tumor. So you have two folders, S and no. So here you have the images. Okay. Okay, so some of the images are plotted here, which has a tumor and which is not having the tumor. So here you can see the images are plotted here. Okay. And you can see the shape of the image, very important. The input to your model should be same as 224 to 224 into 3. So you have to pre-process your image and reshape your image into uh, same size because this is a size that is required by your uh, VGG16. Okay. So make sure your size is same. So you can see how many uh, images are there in uh, training and testing. Okay, how many images are there in training and setting? So you have 169 images in training and 84 images in uh, testing. Okay, now you can compile your model. Okay, so the optimizer that is you are using is Adam optimizer. And this is the method that is used to find out the loss. You can try for different uh, optimizer and you can also try for different loss method. Okay, and then you're finally calling the model dot fit method. So here you can see your model is trained. Now, if you see here, the accuracy of your model, see, actually this is VGG16, which is trained on ImageNet model, okay, which is completely different from the uh, medical model, 
you can use or trying to use the same model and you can see the accuracy easily you can obtain an accuracy of around 94 percentage okay so easily you can get an accuracy of about 94 percentage by just using a transfer learning model okay so here you can see from keras i just up, uh, i have downloaded from keras i have used vgg16 right see import vgg16 like that you can import any of these models i think i already showed you Yeah, it, this is your uh, TensorFlow Hub. Okay, so in TensorFlow Hub, see, you can see it gives you a list of transfer learning methods that are available in different domains, in text problem domain, in image problem domain, in video problem domain, audio problem domain. See, in audio, if you want to do uh, classification, you have list of algorithms available here command reduction you have list of algorithms so if you want to do an application you need not write any code for everything you have already pre-existing model just you can download that model and then you can start using in your application so here you can see this one will be very useful for you if you want to develop some application um, for text image see for classification you have 306 different methods for feature vectors, you have 217 methods. Object deduction, you have 88 methods. Segmentation, you have 44 methods. So many methods are available. And all these methods are available in this uh, website, TensorFlow Hub. Here you can see these are all the pre-existing models in different application areas. Okay, now coming back to this. Uh, yeah, coming back to the model. So here uh, you saw the accuracy was around... 94 percentage see so, and this is the uh, graph okay so easily without any effort and uh, you see what is the time required to train this uh, method hardly it took only five or ten minutes to train this method train this model okay so uh, without spending much effort without sending uh, spending much time i was able to classify this brain tumor data set with the help of pre-existing uh, model, which is called as VGG16. Okay, so is the transfer learning useful for us? Definitely, it will save our time and effort. Okay. Okay, so we saw the uh, demo for this one so like this you can use any um, any area like you can take an x-ray classify your x-ray take a retina image classify whether you have a retinoscopy or not any domain for any domain you can start using the uh, weights which is already learned from the pre-existing model okay so any any domain you can take and you can use your transfer learning Okay, so transfer learning is not only used in image classification and all those things, it is also used in word embedding. As I already told you, if you want to do uh, text uh, classification or you want to do uh, emotional recognition or you want to do, uh, do uh, nature language processing. So there also you find a lot of algorithms are available. Okay, uh, for example, you have Globe algorithm, you have Google uh, word to vec algorithm. Now, what is this word to vec algorithm? See, words can, uh, can machine understand words. No, words has to be converted into numbers, right? So you have to use one not encoding or label encoding, or you have another encoding called as uh, word to vec encoding. Okay, so here the word will be mapped into three dimensional vector space, okay? So if you, for example, uh, you have a three dimensional vector space, suppose this is your pune. So here you will have girl, here you will have boy. Okay, the words will be mapped in a three dimensional vector space. Okay, will be mapped in a three dimensional vector space. So how to map this word to three dimensional vector space? You need not uh, um, uh, hit your head to do this. You have 
uh, a pre-trained model called as Google word to vec model. Just uh, download the model and use your model, give your input. Your input will be converted into a uh, vector space. Okay, so it's very easy. So uh, there are, uh, as I showed you in the uh, TensorFlow Hub, you have a lot of, uh, lot of pre-existing models available in different applications. So you can start using all these models in your uh, method. I think I finish with this.